From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. It may not look like it, but 12-year-old Morris Kaboro is improving Kenya's water supply. He's teaching his grandfather the importance of trees. I've told my grandfather that planting of trees is important. It helps by giving shade, but it also gives shade to our crops. So when it rains, the trees will conserve moisture. What Kaboro knows about trees and water, he learned at school from his teachers. And from hands-on experience. Students at Kambaru Primary School have planted more than 4,000 trees. Their efforts are part of a larger greening program that has already rehabilitated 2,600 hectares of forest and increased water flow from one of the country's most important water sources, Mount Kenya. Faith Johnson is manager of the Mount Kenya East Pilot Project for Natural Resources Management. In Kenya we have the five water towers and Mount Kenya is one of the most significant in this country. And the government is very keen in conserving this water tower for the growth of the economy and employment creation and food security. An hour from Kambaru Primary School, the Mount Kenya Forest Reserve, here, it becomes obvious why this mountain is referred to as a water tower. As fog blows over the forest, trees absorb moisture and then later release it back into the air, contributing to the rain cycle and ensuring the flow of clean water further downstream. Yet for the past four decades, excessive logging has significantly reduced forest cover, slowing water flow, eroding soil, and increasing poverty particularly for the majority of the population here that rely on farming. Soil fertility is very, very important. And when there's a soil erosion, continuous soil erosion, it depletes the soil, it becomes less fertile, less productive. And when it's less productive, the food security is threatened, and therefore the, the farmer becomes poor. The poorer they are, the more they deplete the resources. They go on cutting the trees within these uh, rural settings, and it becomes a, a vicious cycle. Putting a stop to the cycle has required a multi-pronged approach, including encouraging a broader cultural change that project organizers say begins with children like Kaboro. As part of the school greening program, Kaboro is encouraged to share what he's learned with family at home. In his case, his grandfather, Adriano. Kaboro has taught me how to plant trees and how to plant them in the right places, and also pruning and cleaning. Adriano used to fell trees for firewood, but now, thanks to Kaboro's influence, he selectively prunes his trees, and the family uses the cuttings for cooking and heating. His efforts seem to be paying off. Within the short time that we've been planting trees, it seems there is more water. As more people take part, we are seeing some changes in the streams which were dying up very fast. This time the water flows for a longer time than before. With support from the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, it's estimated that since 2005, more than 7 million seedlings have been planted in water catchments along the eastern slopes of Mount Kenya. And thanks to the efforts of students like Kaboro, the Kenyan government has announced plans for a national school greening program, encouraging children across the country to plant trees. This report was produced by James Heer for the United Nations.